Good morning, FOA squad. I'm Anthony, and welcome to our channel, Life with Anthony. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Happy Saturday before Christmas. Oh, my God. Last night, guys, it was nine degrees out, out last night. Nine degrees. Wowzer. And today, I'm going to show you guys how I survived in sleeping in nine degrees weather with no heat. I'm gonna show you all the things that is around and things that I have done to this van to help prep me as much as I can for this uh, type of weather, these types of low temperatures. And it was so crazy because when I woke up this morning, I looked up, I had this Coke. Let me show you guys. I had this Coke bottle that was sitting on my table and it completely froze. Also guys, look, <laughs> my dentures. <laughs> oh my goodness guys, my dentures froze. My dentures froze. I went to uh, look at them and I opened up the case and they were frozen. So I'm going to have to boil some water and set them in some water and so they can uh, thaw out. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, this might be a no denture day for me, boy. But anyway, let me get up. Let me get up. Everything in here is probably frozen. Let me see about my vitamins. Everything in here is probably frozen. I got up and took a pee last night and I looked at my phone and it was nine degrees outside. I was like, oh my God. Let me try to take these vitamins while I'm thinking about it. A lot of times I forget to take these bad boys. Mm. Remember those vitamins I told y'all that when I first, the first time I ate them, they were nasty? Well, they're good now. I don't know what happened. They sugary, they good. Mm. All right. Let me get up. Thaw out my dentures. And I'm going to show you guys the things that I did around this van prior to this weather hitting to help me to stay as comfortable and sleep as comfortable as possible in low temperatures like last night. All right, guys. The first thing that I want to talk about are the window panels. This van has eight windows in it, and I have window panels in six of the eight windows. Unlike the SUV where I bought custom-made window panels, I made these window panels on my own. Michael made the, the front windshield panel. <clears throat> and as you can see, I have window panels. I did the best I can with making these panels because they were really, really hard to make. And I sort of gave up when I got to the front two. So I have six window panels and six of the eight windows. So that was the first thing that I did to help prep me for the colder weather. The next thing I want to talk about is the floor and ceiling. I have three layers of insulation on the floor. The first layer is a half inch plywood that covers the entire space of the floor. On top of the plywood, I have Reflectix that also covers the entire space of the floor. And third and not least, at the advice of many of you at the time I made that video, because I was gonna stop there and let the Reflectix be the top layer of the flooring in here, and many of you said that, you know, 
that might tear during uh, time over time and from me walking on it and putting all kinds of things from the outside on top of it I went ahead and I put a layer of carpet on top of the Reflectix so I have three layers of insulation on the floor now, if I had to choose any of the things that I'm talking about today that helps me to stay as warm and comfortable in the van as possible, I would say that the flooring is the most important one because a lot of air and a lot of cold can come from the floor and as well as the windows, but I would say the flooring a tad bit more so than the windows. Now, as for the ceiling, I think that this ceiling has some insulation in it. This van has four of these little heating ducts in the back of this van. And that's why it makes this van, to me, a really good van because I don't have to get out of bed in the mornings. I get my grab my keychain, I click my automatic, automatic start, and the heat starts circulating through these little ducts that are back here. And in about five minutes, and the good thing about my car, this van is, when I automatically start it, it will only stay on for about five minutes. I say maybe five or six minutes, and then it automatically shuts back off. And But that's enough time that this van it has warmed up to the point where I can get out of bed. So I think there's some insulation in this ceiling as well. The next thing I want to talk about is my bedding. Layers, layers, layers is the key if you don't have a sleeping bag. I have a sleeping bag. Don't ask me why I don't have it with me. I did not look and see what the weather was gonna be while I was in Baltimore and or even in PA. So I could have had my sleeping bag with me. But once I get back to PA, the few more nights that I'll be in PA before heading down south, I will get my sleeping bag out. But layers, layers, layers is the key for me personally to feel as warm as possible inside my bed when I'm sleeping at night. So the first layer that I have is my 100% wool blanket. Now I've been sleeping on top of the blanket instead of putting the blanket on top of me because the other layers that I have that I'm about to show you guys have been doing really well and hasn't given me the need to get underneath this. But I think it works just as well when you're sleeping on top of it as well because it keeps your body warm that way too. Then I have my main blanket right here, which is this gray blanket here on top. Now this blanket here is really thin. It's not a lot of substance to it. It's not a lot of whatever cotton or whatever is inside of these blankets. So I have this blue and then I lay out this blue, uh, kind of like a fleece blanket. It's really heavier. It's actually heavier than my main um, blanket. So I lay this out and then finally, last but not least, I have this red and black blanket that I've had with me for a while. It's nice and thick for the size of this blanket. And I lay those on top of me. So. I sleep on top of my wool blanket, and then I have three layers of pretty reasonable warmth uh, blankets on top of me. And they have been doing a really good job. Last night, um, they did really well with keeping me warm. Just whenever I moved or manipulated my body, the air came from uh, inside, from in the, uh, came underneath the covers. But whenever I was still and moved, I was fine. But if I had to get up and use the bathroom or something, you know, of course, I let the air back in underneath my bed. But I quickly warmed back up once I got back underneath the bed. Now, here's a little trick I want to show you guys. Before I'm, I'm, I moved my bed, when I first put my bed in here, I had my bed about an inch away from the wall. And I did that because my blanket is so big because this, they don't make 24 inches wide blankets and stuff. So my blanket was so big 
that I tucked it down in the side. It actually was hitting the floor along the side. Now I'm gonna tell you why that was a really good thing to do. Because when I got underneath my bed, <clears throat> it blocked the air from that was touching the wall. And no air came underneath the bed from that side, which is good. So when I tossed and turned that night, you know, no air got in from that end. However, having the bed pulled out an inch or so, it took away my my walkway space. So I recently went ahead and pushed the bed back and regained my space. And now I much prefer to have all of this space right here, uh, a much bigger walkway space, or not walkway space, but leg space. So that's what I do for my bedding. The last thing I wanna talk about guys that I do that helps keep me warm in these really low temperatures is my clothing. I sleep in a full set of clothing. Whatever I have on that day, I sleep in it. It's usually going to be either some jeans, some sweatpants, or some other type pants. Whatever it is that I have on, I usually wear a t-shirt underneath all of my shirts in the wintertime. And I also sleep in my hoodie with my insulated hat, not these types of hat. This hat right here is insulated. It helps keep my head really warm. As a matter of fact, it does a really good job in keeping my head really warm. Also, I have these winter socks. And when I tell you guys, these socks are thick. These bad boys are thick. I usually just go ahead and put these over top of the socks that I have on. Now in the winter time, I generally wear uh, a longer pair of white tube socks and a black pair of uh, the foot socks. So I put these over top of those two pair of socks and my feet stays really, really warm. I got these from either Costco's or Sam Clubs when um, Michael and I were on a road trip. But these bad boys, let me tell you, they do a really good job with help keeping my feet warm. So generally, like I said, I sleep in all of my clothes. I'll put my insulated hat on. I have my hoodie on. And last night, the only thing that got cold was my nose. And that was because I kept my nose out of the covers from underneath the covers so that I can breathe properly. Um, for some reason, even if I'm underneath the covers and I have the covers pushed away from my nose, it just seems like I'm not breathing properly. So I tend to stick my nose out. So my nose was the only thing that was a little bit cold, but that's okay. I mean, that's just one part of my body. Uh, everything else was really, really warm underneath the covers. So guys, there you have it. Those are the things that I do that will help me keep warm in nine degree temperatures. Um, to be honest, it didn't, it didn't feel that cold to me. You know, it, it really didn't. I don't know. Maybe I am a true winter baby born in January. I don't know. But it did not feel cold. It felt, I mean, it felt cold, of course, because it is the winter, winter time and nine degrees. I mean, but it wasn't freezing. You know how you see a lot of um, people in the winter time talk about, oh, it's, they're freezing and this. I, I did not feel that way. Even when I got up to take a pee at night and then crawl back in, into bed, I still did not feel like, oh my God, it's freezing. I, I did not get that feeling. I think it's very important to take the extra steps if you are going to live in a vehicle in the winter time. Get your windows insulated, you know. Do as much as possible to your floor to help your floor stay as as best it can. Because honestly, if I touch my floor right now, my, my floor feels cold, but it's not freezing. I could probably stand on my floor with my uh, shoes off and be okay. And that just goes from taking those extra measures to make sure that, you know, 
put as much insulation in every part of your vehicle as possible to give you a, a fighting chance. Now, if you're not doing all of these things to, to give yourself a fighting chance, then naturally you're going to be much more colder than the way that I feel inside of my van. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. As always, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. You know that. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas tomorrow, and I'll see you guys the next time.